lot of questions to be answered. Let's get into it now with Ahmed Al Baray, a lecturer at Istanbul Aydin University, and retired Colonel Reuven Berko, Arab Affairs commentator for Israel Today newspaper. You're both very welcome to the program, gentlemen. Um, Reuven, can we begin with you, please? Israel has praised the move, but surely the almost universal global chorus of criticism against the move proves that it's not the right decision. Well, I believe this decision is very important, despite the fact that, as far as I remember from historical point of view, the kings of the dynasties of Israel never got consultant with Erdogan or any other <coughs> regime in the world at the time they put the Israeli uh, capital in Jerusalem at the times of the Kingdom of Israel, a long history. And by the way, I never heard about Palestine, even not in the Quran. So, Palestinian people are very important. We want to create a Palestinian state, the first time in history, a side by side by Israel. But unfortunately, Jerusalem is like a wife. You can't share a wife. You already got married with Jerusalem 3,000 years ago. So this is a ridiculous demand by the Palestinians. As to the fact that Al-Aqsa is very important to Muslims all over the world, we really respect it. And by the time Muslims are uh, exploding mosques all over the, the Islamic area, here in the Middle East, Al-Aqsa Mosque is the most uh, uh, guaranteed place, very safe, very secured, and everybody okay. can make his worship there. The fact that Al-Aqsa is important to Muslims doesn't turn it automatically to be somebody's capital okay. only to the right. Israelis. Let's put a point to uh, let's Quran put a point to Ahmed. And Mecca, okay. Mecca is not the capital. Mecca is not the capital. Ruben, we'll of get Saudi back to you. Okay. okay. Not Jordan put not Jordan put Jerusalem a capital to them at the time. Ruben, they we'll get back to you in just a this moment. I want to put nonsense. a point to Ahmed. If the embassy is going to be put in a part of Jerusalem that is not disputed. Why are we seeing such an aggressive reaction around the Muslim world? First of all, it is ridiculous, in my opinion, to speak about Palestine is not mentioned in the Quran, then the Palestinians have the right to speak. This is kind of a obsolete rhetoric that the people are bored of hearing that from an Israeli guy speaking now to the world. Jerusalem, you go to the UN resolutions in the international community, the General Assembly, back down to the uh, resolution 181, the part resolution that speaks about stipulates that Jerusalem should be an independent entity. Neither the Palestinians nor the Israelis will be controlling this city in the final stages. That's what the General Secretary of the UN is speaking about. Mm. That's what the consensus of the international community is speaking about. It's only Donald Trump himself and Benjamin Netanyahu who think that now it's the time because of the turmoil of the Arab world, what's happening in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Egypt, all around the Arab world, they're not ready to take the Palestinian cause as a priority, and that's the time they're going to seize this. For the Muslims, not only for the Muslims, for all the Abrahamic religions, it is a very important place. It's one of the most sacred places for okay. Judaism, for Christianity, for Muslims. But the Israelis are trying to say it's exclusive only for the Okay, uh, let, let me I want to put Jews, one of the points. Kind of okay, well, I want to put one of the points to Reuven that you made, Ahmed. Is this legitimizing, Reuven, what many, including the United Nations and most legal scholars, considers to be violations of international law on Israel's part? There well, is Reuven, there go there ahead, is, Reuven. You as, can uh, say. Your honorable, as your honorable guest mentioned, okay. there were several resolutions concerning Israel and the solution. But unfortunately, the Palestinians never accepted it, and even Arab states at the time didn't accept it, and they arranged wars against Israel using terror, which has been turned to be the only one startup the Palestinians and contributed to the world. And from that time on, they are using terror to achieve political achievements. They never accepted the resolutions by, made by UN. So now you are. You want, you want us to go back 
to square one on which they never accepted it because circumstances are changed after the, afterwards. It's ridiculous to mention this, but I want to tell you, to emphasize one thing. Since there never been a Palestinian state, the Palestinian capital should be everywhere going towards a solution in the future. If you want to go to back to square one, we can get back to the kingdom okay. of Israel that go and the resolutions that assured us that even Jordan kingdom should be uh, our, you know, at the time right. before uh, where we were two, they all they decided that even Jordan's kingdom should okay, be hold on, to Israel. Okay, hold on, Reuven. Don't go back to history. Go to the future. The right, future okay. is uh, the uh, fact that we Ahmed. want to create a Palestinian yeah. state and Ramallah should be its capital. Okay, hold on a That's minute, Reuven. We'll come back to you in a second. Uh, yeah. Ahmed, um, just on what has been seen in the aftermath of this decision, Hamas has already called for an intifada. You know, people are going to die with this if that happens on both sides. Is there not a peaceful, diplomatic way of taking issue with a decision without calling for violence? Nobody would accept the backlash of such a move, this kind of a provocation, not only for the Palestinian rights, it's a violation of the international law. And Donald Trump had a message from everywhere, from Indonesia, Malaysia, here in Turkey, to Morocco. Everybody is condemning the move in the Arab and Muslim world, even the European Union, Macron, the UK, and the Pop himself condemned the move, and everybody is speaking about the status quo should that's be right. maintained in Jerusalem, in the old city. And that's the main problem coming back to your guest who is speaking about history, who is speaking about the future. Who killed the, uh, Ishaq Rapin? Who's the one who's radicalizing the whole region? If you're speaking about Palestinians doing terrorist attacks, who killed the Palestinians in Gaza, in Jerusalem? Who's trying to put the, ma the metal detectors in the um, the Al-Aqsa compound. It's the Israelis who are trying to push toward more radicalization. The Palestinians have the full right to resist peacefully against what's happening in okay. their own land. They we, have okay. the right to be in East Jerusalem according to the we, international community resolutions. Okay, we can get bogged down with, with, with seeing who killed who in this situation. I think we can all agree that it's a horrific uh, last number of decades in the region. But Reuven, given the backlash that Israel will now face from its neighbors, is allowing the U.S. Embassy to relocate to Israel, uh, to, to Jerusalem, more trouble than it's actually worth? Because we saw Tel Aviv being the de facto capital. Uh, we saw the American Embassy in Tel Aviv, but yet the violence still continued. Will it not only get worse if it moves to Jerusalem? Not at all, sir. Not at all. I'll tell you why. Actually, if speaking about such a squad, I want to reply to your uh, honorable guest. Well, briefly such on that squad point, please. Is kept in Jerusalem. You are mixing a minute. Sorry, you are mixing between sovereignty and religious law and religious uh, uh, freedom of worship. Israel is the only only state that maintain re a religious freedom for all prayers in Jerusalem. The status quo is very seriously kept in Jerusalem. Now the Islamists are threatening... And that's that why your, your is government, in Qatar. your prime minister... Is sorry, sorry, you Islam. can't disturb me. I, not, I won't allow you to disturb. In Jerusalem. Now, that's Jerusalem the is not in danger. About, right? The real danger is Mecca and Medina are in danger by Iran. The Arab people, the Arab nations understand now the, the aspiration of Turkey to, to renew the Sultanah, the Khilafah, the Ottoman Empire is bullshit. Never, nobody will accept this on one hand. And on the other hand, everybody understand that Iran is threatening Mecca and Al Medina. This is the real threat. Jerusalem is a very secured. The, the, the mosque is very secured. Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish state. Sha'aman Shaba wa Abaman Abba. Okay. As they say we're, in Arabic. Okay, we're but running out of time here. We, we're literally eye. running out of time. On Hold on, Reuven. Of worship. Okay. Israel is the only state that allows this. Okay, we're running out of time. W both of you can sum up your thoughts now if you wish. We've got 30 seconds each. Ahmed, let's start with you. 
the United States, Donald Trump and Israel think that this is the right time to make this kind of propaganda. Iran is the only monster who has expansionist policy in the region. That's why the Sunni countries represented by Not Saudi only. Arabia, Egypt, also other Turkey moderate countries should Take be care, fighting sir. against Iran. But on the other hand, Israel does have the hegemony, does have a kind of colonial mentality that is going on violating its a rogue state, okay. violating all the international laws and not respecting any of the international community calls. This is going to have okay. serious Riven. repercussions. This is going to have a, ba a backlash. It's going to backfire, alienate the Israelis and the okay. Americans as an impartial broker to peace process. They're no more. Riven, we've got 15 process. seconds. We expect okay, other Ahmed, international thank you. We have, we have 15 seconds. Allow me to reply. Go ahead, we have 15 seconds. Sir, I would emphasize, finish my idea in, in emphasizing that Al Quran Al Karim gives this promised blessed land to the sons of Israel. The, those who fight this God's will you're will good, never you're good. Try succeed. to memorize more verses uh, of the Quran. Karima, Try to learn more Arabic. Nobody would listen to this. Nobody. Everybody says, El Ard al Mubaraka, Beit al Magdis, wa Aknaf Beit al Magdis. This is the land of the Israelis, okay. including Jerusalem. Nobody can object it. This is the Lord's will. This, this is, is just history. A pipe this dream. is religious. This will so never last. You can survive with these this kind of Okay, things. gentlemen, we have to wrap it up people there. People need to coexist. People need to find okay. solutions. Ahmed Al Barai, lecturer at Istanbul Aydin University, and Ruven Burko, Arab Affairs commentator for Israel Today newspaper. Thanks both of you for coming on the program. Well, something will happen when I become the president. As soon as I take office, I will begin the process of moving the United States ambassador to the city of Israel as chosen as its capital. Jerusalem will remain the capital of Israel and it must remain undivided. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. And we will send a clear signal that there is no daylight between America and our most reliable ally, the State of Israel. I can tell you that it was a very um, thoughtful interagency process. The president, I, I would say, is, is um, pretty solid in his thinking at this point. Presidents have talked about it for a long time, but this president, it seems, is going to do it. And that is to declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel and then make a plan to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, the number of calls today between the president and world leaders, the Israeli prime minister, uh, the president of the Palestinian Authority, the king of Jordan, the Egyptian president, uh, King Salman of Saudi Arabia, there are 17 countries warning the U.S. against moving the embassy to Jerusalem, and this is the list of those countries, uh, because they fear that there will be a lot of uh, controversy, a lot of potential danger. And tonight we can report that U.S. embassies across the region are staffing up on security, including U.S. Marine fast teams. Let's bring in our panel. In Washington, Mara Elias, a national political correspondent of National Public Radio. From Chicago, Tom Bevan, Real Clear Politics co-founder and publisher. And from Wasilla, Alaska, Kimberly Strassel, member of the editorial board at The Wall Street Journal. Mara, let me start with you. We have covered this. I've covered it as a chief White House correspondent. I know you've covered it. Many presidencies have talked about this. It seems that this president is going to do it. It seems he's going to do it. What we don't know is what the timeline is going to be. We expect that he will do two things. He will say that he recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, but he'll also sign that waiver again, which means that the embassy isn't going to move just yet. It might take several years to do it. And the question is, given all those countries who are against this move, with the exception, of course, of Israel, uh, the president will be fulfilling a campaign promise. He'll make his base very happy, uh, conservative Christians, members of the Jewish community. But I don't know exactly how this increases the momentum for a Middle East peace deal. To that point, H.R. McMaster, the National Security Advisor, speaking to Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday about this. 
our options in, involving uh, the move of an embassy at some point in the future, which I think you know, could be used to gain momentum uh, toward, toward a peace agreement and, and, uh, and a solution that works uh, both for Israelis and for Palestinians. So, Kimberly, does this put the cart before the horse at this action? No, I think McMaster makes an underrated but important point. Because, look, one of the sticking points always when you get to an Israeli-Palestinian negotiation is this question of Jerusalem. Um, and what this does in moving the capital and actually taking the step, it's an acknowledgment that that is something that, Jerusalem, that the Israelis are never going to budge on and that the United States backs them in. And it's also a way of highlighting that the Palestinian focus on this has been an obstruction to moving ahead in negotiations. So there is an argument to be made that if you get it done and get it over with, you lay the groundwork to then move forward. Okay. Tom? Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is another example of Trump not coming from, not being steeped in political traditions, uh, diplomatic traditions, and not approaching this decision from the traditional, we've had this policy of signing this waiver, even though it's been government policy since 1995, even since, uh, though you played, all the presidents had not been willing to take this step for, for uh, uh, you know, perhaps uh, antag antagonizing uh, other countries. Trump approached the North Korea problem the same way as, you know, what we've done in the past hasn't worked. So he's willing to take a different tack. He did that on Paris climate. I mean, there are a list of examples where um, love, love Trump or hate Trump, he approaches these problems from a different perspective. And, and we'll see how it works out. So I guess the question is, Mara, is the reaction in the region and if there is if there are, in fact, U.S. facilities in danger as a result of even the naming of Jerusalem as the capital? Yeah, well, that's the big question. The Palestinians said that they didn't want him to do it. They're warning about violence. Uh, they're talking about days of rage. The Saudis, who are Trump's new best friends in the region, didn't want him to do it. Turkey said this would be a red line for Muslims. I mean, we don't know yet what the reaction is going to be. People are warning about a, a possibly violent reaction. We'll find out. But I think the big question is, when McMaster says this might make it easier or open up some options, what are they and what is the plan? Uh, the president says he wants to make this ultimate deal, but we have never heard a lot of details about what it would be or even a framework. Kimberly, last word on this. Yeah, this also just gets to credibility. As has been mentioned, a lot of presidents have said they're going to do this, um, and they haven't followed through. And as every foreign policy expert will tell you, there is no greater currency, uh, no greater negotiating power than a country has when it actually does what it says it's going to do. So with any luck, uh, by actually affecting this move, the president gains a little bit of credibility in that peace process if he's going to go forward with it.